Greetings, saints of God. This is your brother, Brother Chris, coming to you today with another teaching from the House of Prayer, Education and Worship Center. Yeah, today's message will be titled, The Least Commandments. Before I go into this teaching, I do want to say for the record, I want to get this out on video, seeing that everyone today, they're on their uh, social media platforms, everyone's watching videos, uh, everyone's on their phones. For anybody out there that's searching for the true doctrine that should be talked about today, uh, it's no coincidence you have stumbled across this. I do want to say for the record, there's not many ministers that's doing what they're told by the Master, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord means Master. So if he's their master and they're the servants, they should be doing what their Lord says. Now I've been in the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ for a long time now, and I will stay in that doctrine. According to 2 John 1, 9, New King James Version, it says, whosoever, whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine, and that's the teaching instructions of Christ Jesus, does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. And just from hearing those clear words, it clearly shows that a lot of people, they just don't have God. And that if they don't abide, stay in the teaching instructions of the Lord Jesus Christ, they don't have either the Father or the Son. But those who is talking about this today, they have the Father and the Son, and they have God. As simple as that. Now, in John chapter 5, uh, excuse me, John chapter 15, verses 15, 9, I'm so sorry, please forgive me. John chapter 15, verses 9 and 10, KJV says, as the Father has loved me, this is the Lord Jesus talking, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide, stay in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide, stay in his love. Emphasis on, we gotta keep the Lord Jesus' commandments. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today, the least commandments. Now, John chapter 15, verses 12 and 14 says, This is my commandments. The Lord Jesus says, That you love one another as I have loved you. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. So the emphasis is on if you do whatsoever I command you. And today we're going to go through what did he command us and please know that this didn't come off the top of Jesus head and he spoke his own words he told us what the father said for him to say now in John chapter 14 verses 21 it says he who has my commandments and keep them is the one who loves me I'm going to say that again. He who has my commandments and keep them is the one who loves me. You can read the rest of that, but this will prove if you truly love your master, your Lord. Many people will say, I love you, Lord, but if we don't do what he say, we're just fooling ourselves. Okay, again, this message is titled, what is the least commandments? Now, if you turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter 5, we're going to start at verses 19 downward. And I'm going to get right into this. It says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so or to do the same, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do 
the least commandments and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven so in my notes I put key words here is break the least commandments or do the least commandments and do and teach the least commandments it's very simple we as the body of Christ are to be number one learning what is the least commandments Two, living by or doing the least commandments number three living by or doing the least commandments while teaching them please focus on those key points now I do want to say most are not doing this now my guesstimation is that because maybe most don't want to be called the least the less important in the kingdom of heaven or maybe most have tried but failed to keep the least commandments or the majority are simply antichrist the statement whosoever shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach others to do the same this falls in the category of leading by example for if a leader or a teacher is leading a group or of believers there to have the same mindset the Apostle Paul had when he said follow me as I follow Christ I must admit not just anyone can attain to the statue in Christ unless he or she has been truly converted born again for in the least commandments it is said that for example the learners are changed and charged with committing adultery spiritually if they just look upon a woman or a man so this is an, an example of how we know it's going to take the Holy Spirit to basically do this in and through us because here if you just look on a woman or a man it says you already committed adultery in your heart if you lust after him or her no one can do this without the power of the Holy Spirit if they try to without the Holy Spirit they will be classified as having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof we need this power I advise all to repent and seek this power and call on the Father who this power belongs to yeah and for the record I just want to uh, say that um, my messages has have not been with clarity I don't really edit my videos that much you know uh, taking out mistakes I made I, I want people to know my flaws and the Lord brought to my mind uh, what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2 and 4 and I'm gonna read it out of the Amplified it says in my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom using clever rhetoric but they were delivered in demonstration of the Holy Spirit operating through me and of his power stirring the minds of the listeners and persuading them yeah I do want to let you all know most people they'll cut a person off because they're not so eloquent in speech but the Lord I see he tends to use people who they they're not educated I'm educated but he will use a person who can't talk that it will be shown that it's his power in and through that individual so thank you all for putting up with um, my videos so here we're going to start in Matthew uh, chapter 5 verses uh, 19 so if you guys can turn to that and and on top of all of what I just said most people they they're not enduring sound doctrine today and that's what this is this is wholesome sound doctrine and the scripture says many won't endure it you know that's why people have to make short videos today but if you're hungry and you want to learn this is the place to be so here at, at verse 19 the Lord Jesus says so whosoever breaks one of these least and important or these commandments and teach others to do the same will be called least important in the kingdom of heaven 
but whosoever practices and teach them, he will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now that's the Amplified Version. Now let's go on down and see what these least commandments are. Verse 20 it says, For I say to you that unless your righteousness, uprightness, moral essence is more than that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So again, this is the amplified version. Now, this is, if you're keeping notes, this is number one. The number one least commandment is your righteousness must excel or be better than the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. And put this scripture in your notes because I'm gonna try to move rapidly to keep the video short. Jeremiah 23, five and six. If you guys turn to that, I put in my notes, we fulfill this one, this commandment, if we're in Christ, for it is written, he, Jesus Christ, shall be called the Lord our righteousness. That's what Jeremiah 23, five and six says. Also, you guys put in your notes, Romans chapter 10, verses three, and Philippians chapter 3 verses 9 which shows Jesus is God's righteousness and we're not to have our own righteousness so please keep that in mind this is number one you gotta keep these least commandments and teach them and do them all right number two We're going to look at Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse 21. The Lord Jesus says, You have heard that it was said to the men of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be guilty before the court. But I say to you, that everyone who continues to be angry with his brother or harbors malice against him without a cause, shall be guilty before the court and whoever speaks contemptuously and insultingly to his brother Reka, which means you empty-headed idiot shall be guilty before the Supreme Court the Sanhedrin and whoever says you fool shall be in danger of the fiery hell so the least commandment number two put this in your notes we're not to be angry with our brethren without having a cause or reason or a purpose without just cause, basically. You know, for example, I've been told or heard it being said of a person said, I don't like that person. And they didn't even do anything wrong to them. They just said, I just don't like them. I'm mad, you know, or they're angry with them for no reason. Uh, if you violate this uh, least commandment, you are considered a murderer in the eyes of God. And I want you guys to read Ephesians chapter 4 verses 26. Put that in your notes. And that, that scripture simply says, be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Now we can be angry, but don't get over into sinning. And try to take care of that situation before the sun goes down don't let it harbor don't let it fester so that's least commandment number two you'll be considered a murderer in the eyes of God if you're angry with your brother without having a reason to be all right back to Matthew chapter 5 uh, verse 23 it says so if you are presenting your offering at the altar and while there you remember that your brother has something such as a grievance or a legitimate complaint against you leave your offering there at the altar and go first and make peace with your brother and then come and present your offering yeah before I get into that least commandment I want to go back to the one where it says not to be angry with your brother without having a cause or a reason. 
uh, I want to add to that the Lord reminded me to say we're not to say to our brother or call them out of their name or say any harsh thing to our brother that's why it's written let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace to the hearer and you can find that in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 29 also read James chapter 3 verses 7 through 12 failure to keep this one can send you to hell fire Yeah, because if you look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 22, it says, But I say to you that everyone who continues to be angry with his brother or harbors malice against him shall be guilty before the court, and whosoever speak contempt contemptuously and insultingly to his brother, calling him names like Rekha, you empty-headed idiot, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court, the Sanhedrin. And whosoever say you fool shall be in danger of the fiery hell. And that's why, you know, there's other scriptures to go with this. Basically saying, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearer. So, basically, if you're not going to say anything good to your brother, don't say nothing at all. So we have to do and teach this least commandment. I don't know if you guys ever studied this or heard a minister teaching on the least commandments, but they should be observed, looked at, and kept. All right, let's keep moving on here. Uh, I believe we're on number four. What is the fourth least commandment? And this one, in verse 23 of Matthew chapter five, it says, "So." If you are presenting your offering at the altar and while there you remember that your brother has something such as a grievance or a legitimate complaint against you, leave your offering there at the altar and go first and make peace with your brother and then come and present your offering. So under that least commandment, this is what I put in my notes. We're to be reconciled, renew friendship with the brethren before offering any gift before the consecrated church gathering altar. Read Proverbs chapter 6 verses 19 and it says one abomination God points out that he hates is a person who continues to sow discord among brethren. And also read Psalms 133 verses 4 where it says that brethren should dwell together in unity. That's what the Lord wants to see. Okay, moving right along to what is the least commandment, number five. So look at Matthew chapter five, verses 25. It says, come to terms quickly at the earliest opportunity with your opponent at law while you are with him on the way to court so that your opponent does not hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you are thrown into prison. I assure you, the Lord says, and most solemnly say to you, you will not come out of there until you have paid the last cent. So least commandment number five would be we're to agree with our adversaries before they take us to court. Now the reason being is based on John chapter 15 verse 19 where Jesus says if you were of the world the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world but I have chose you out of the world therefore basically the world hates you. And you can read the rest of that. Also I want you guys to put in your notes 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 1 through 8. Emphasis on accept wrong. 
let yourselves be defrauded. You know, it says basically take the wrong. You you could be right and your opponent is wrong, but the Lord says just make peace and just you know basically say, you know what, you're right, you're right, sir, you're right, ma'am. That you know that type of example. You know, there's other scriptures to go with what the Lord Jesus Christ taught, and He said it. If we hear these sayings of His and don't do them, we're going to be like somebody who built their house on the sand. Now, when the trials come, the floods and all that, the rain, and it's going to beat upon that house, it's going to fall, and great will be the fall of it. So let's do what the Lord said. Okay, let's go to least commandment number six. And this is in Matthew chapter 5, verses 26. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Well, yeah, let's go down to verse... 27 this one will explain the least commandment number six and it reads you have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery but I say to you that everyone who so much as look at a woman and I'm gonna put in there or a man with lust for her or him has already committed adultery with her or him in his or her heart. So let's read 29. It says, If your right eye makes you stumble and leads you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. That is, remove yourself from the source of temptation. For it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Verse 30, if your right hand makes you to stumble and leads you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. That is, remove yourself from the source of the temptation, for it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. So let's explain the least commandment number six. Go into my notes, bear with me. It says, we're not to even look on a female or a male to lust after them. If we do it, okay, I put a little uh, typo in my notes here. But basically, if we're if we're looking on a male or a female to lust after them, in the eyes of God, we're committing adultery. We don't have to basically go to the bed chamber chamber and actually do it do the physical act and we and you guys should see it's going to take having the holy spirit the holy spirit's power in your life to not commit that thing because it's easy for us to look on someone to lust after them okay now in my notes i put this fulfills the scripture where it says as we continue to think in our hearts so we become. That's Proverbs 23, 6 and 7. And it also uh, is said this way, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Now our God considers this committing adultery spiritually in our heart. No one is, uh, wait, no more is the physical act the only violation. And I put in my notes, avoid pornography put in your notes also James chapter 4 verses 4 because in that scripture it says the friendship of the world is extreme hostility with God he that would be a friend of the world is the enemy of God and it basically says you are adulterers and adulteresses if you have friendship with the world yes uh, now I do like the way that Amplified explained also that the way you're to uh, remove the part of the body that the Lord Jesus talked about cutting off like the eye or the right hand it says that that is remove yourself from the source of the temptation so make sure you guys are doing that as well don't be around it don't even look at it don't even listen to it 
You know, because if you guys really think about it, really think about this, you can pluck or, you know, pull out your physical eye. You can cut off one hand physically with a saw or a, pit, a, a fork. But will that really stop you from sinning? No. So you have to look at the spiritual uh, teaching in this. What is the Lord really saying? And also that hand or that eye can be a person because there are scriptures that says we are the body of Christ, members in particular. And it really, the Bible speaks on uh, removing a person from you. Uh, it says, uh, if you're right, I put in my notes, if your right eye makes you stumble, tear it out and throw it from you. If your right hand makes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it from you. Cutting off your physical body part won't stop you from sinning. The answer to the parable is this. So write these scriptures in, in your notes. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 13. Emphasis on put away from among yourselves that wicked person. It was a man in the congregation of the righteous. He got into sin, which is leaven. Paul said, get it out. A little leaven will leaven the whole lump. So leaven is yeast. Get it out. And also put in your notes, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verses 18. In that scripture, I put emphasis on one sinner destroys much good. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6, it says a little yeast or leaven leavens the whole lump or of dough. It says, clean, purge out the old leaven so that you may be a new lump or loaf just as you are in fact unleavened. I put, cut off the infected part before it spread to the whole body. If any one Christian is allowing darkness of any kind into his or her own life, just simply put it away. Immediately cut it off. Okay, moving right along, I think uh, we're on what is the least commandment number eight. And look at Matthew chapter 5 verses 31 which says it has also been said whoever divorces his wife is to give her a certificate of divorce but I say to you that whoever divorces his wife except on grounds of sexual immorality causes her to commit adultery and whoever marries a woman who has been divorced commits adultery So let's explore what the Lord is saying here in number eight, least commandment. Okay, now this is least commandment number eight. And in my notes, this is where I put that the Lord wants us to follow that. No more can we put away our spouses for any reason. It would have to be only if he or she commits fornication. Now in the Amplified, it says, except on the grounds of sexual immorality. But if you guys look up that word fornication, if you go into the Strong's um, Greek definition of fornication, the meaning is not just sexual immorality, it's also being unfaithful or turning to false gods. And in my notes, I put, this is talking to believers. So keep in mind, the Lord Jesus Christ is talking to his learners. He's not just talking to uh, people outside of the covenant of God. So fornication can mean where some say your spouse that you're with, they don't want to follow Christ anymore. That's fornication. Except it be for the cause of fornication, the Lord will permit you you know, or grant that thing to happen. Now, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 10 through 16, 
uh, the emphasis is on let the unbeliever lead. The Lord called us to peace. You know, that person basically became an unbeliever. They're, they're not the same as you are. Both people, uh, both the husband and the wife, they're to be in agreement. And the, uh, Paul even wrote that if you're going to marry, uh, marry only in the Lord. Marry in the Lord. You're not to be with an unbeliever. Now, some people can start off in belief and then they could get an unbelief. And if they go toward worshiping idols or another god, that's what the meaning of fornication is. You guys do the research for yourself. Don't take my word for it. But the Lord, he will help the believer because he said if that unbeliever wants to leave, let them leave. And the Lord has called us to peace. So he's not going to let you stay in a messed up situation with that person because there's no unity. There's no agreement. And that one is number eight, least commandment. We got to do it as well as teach it. And I'm going to read that scripture one more time. In verse 32 of Matthew chapter five, it says, but I say to you, whosoever divorces his wife or a wife divorcing a husband, except on the grounds of sexual immorality or fornication causes her or him to commit adultery and whoever marries a woman or a man has the, that has been divorced commits adultery. So that person, they can't marry anymore um, unless that spouse dies, physically dies, and is buried in the physical ground. Then they're free from that law. That's the scriptures, as you see it posted on your screen. You guys, do, do your research for yourself, but... Paul, the Lord spoke through Paul and elaborated on that further. Okay, people of God, for time's sake, for, I don't want the messages to be too long. I'm going to stop here. But there is more uh, least commandments to bring out. And when I start the new video, of part two, I'm going to pick up at uh, verses... 33 Matthew chapter 5 verse 33 and it says again you have heard that it was said to the men of old you shall not make false vows but you shall fulfill your vows to the Lord as a religious duty so that's what we'll pick up under what is the least commandments that we're to do and teach Okay, this is your brother, Brother Chris. If you like what you are hearing, uh, you can subscribe if the Lord puts it on your heart. You can like the video. It's your choice. And do hit the bell because when new videos are released, it will basically let you know. I don't really uh, try to pressure people for subscriptions or likes because it's an algorithm. But... If you like what you're hearing, do tell a friend. And I just rely on the Lord to promote um, his messages. Because these days, a lot of people, they're not in the doctrine of Christ. They're talking on other subjects. The messages, it be about current events, talking about another preacher. Or, you know, I don't know really what's out there. But you guys, I read to you before I got started in this uh, teaching where the Lord says whosoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine the teaching instructions of Christ they don't have God he who abides in the doctrine or the teaching instructions of Christ has both the Father and the Son and that's Second John 1 9 so be careful out there listen for the doctrine of Christ through ministers and you are safe I hope this blessed you if you guys have any questions or comments please do ask until next time shalom